After two attempts at Aston Martin ownership, during which we never really fell in love with our DB7s, we did what we should have done all along. And that was by this, an X100 Jaguar XKR. I've done the most mileage in this car. I've done about 3,000 miles in it and used it in all circumstances and all weathers, driving to the shops, doing long motorway journeys, a road trip to the Isle of Man, and even a track day. And that means I'm qualified to tell you exactly what it's like to live with an X100. Could you live with one? And should you buy one? Well. Let's find out. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers, and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. The first thing to consider when buying an X100 is that they're a big car. You will need quite a sizable driveway or garage to put one in, but that does come with its benefits. For a start, the boot is massive. If you want to go away for a two-week holiday in this and put two massive suitcases in the boot, you absolutely can. The boot is really wide, really deep. There's even space for a spare wheel there. But unfortunately, what you gain in boot space, you lose in that back seat. Quite frankly, I'm not sure how Jaguar have the nerve to even call this a back seat. I mean, there are belts back there and technically there's a place for you to sit, but let me just demonstrate how hard it is to get back here. Now I'm six feet tall, which is fairly heighty, but not enormous. And I have to kind of thread my leg in there, swing my bum in, duck under the low roof, tip back, and then this foot needs to go sideways there and I can't get my legs straight out because the seat is so low that I can't get my feet under it. And I can't put my head up because I'm hitting my head on the ceiling. And I can technically get the belt on, I guess, but you really do have to constrict yourself to get it and then to put it on. This is already hurting and I've been here 10 seconds. My ankle's already hurting, my leg's tight, and I haven't even put the seat back yet. By the time I do that, I, I actually can't put the seat back. I mean, that's not... It's a no-go. It's for small dogs and an occasional bit of extra storage or maybe a newborn baby in a carrier thing. You're not getting people back here, certainly not adults. But in the front, it's a different story. For a start, there's the comfort. You've got so much adjustability in the seat. You can move forwards and back, up and down, recline adjust, headrest adjust, and the steering column's adjustable too. So you can move the wheel in and out and up and down independently to the seat. So no matter how tall or short or how proportioned you are, you will get comfortable in here. It takes some time, it really does work well. And when you are comfortable, you've got a lovely cabin to enjoy. Unlike the DB7 interior, which is a hodgepodge of Ford and Mazda switch gear and then some poor quality trim over the top, the X100 is properly well thought out. You've got some lovely wood or carbon fiber in certain models and you've got leather that really does last the years. It's well stitched together. This car's done 90,000 miles, it's 20 years old and all of it is as fresh as the day it was new, not discolored, really is high quality. Even the switch gear is a lot more coherent than the Aston. It's all way it expected to be and it all flows together nicely. It just makes you feel special. It's a lovely place to be as long as you're not in the back. Right, that's enough about the standing still practicalities of the X100. What's it like on the road? Well, the first thing you expect to get from a Jag is a nice ride. And indeed, the X100 in eight or R guys is a superbly comfortable car. It's floaty enough to iron out the bumps, but it's composed enough that it doesn't wobble when you go over bigger bumps at high speed. But buyer beware on the ride comfort front. You could get these cars with the optional 20 inch BBS split rim. And I think they look stunning. They really suit the shape of this car. But because they're a bigger wheel, you've got a thinner tire sideboard. And that means you are gonna give up a little bit of ride comfort. If you're buying a car with the optional R Performance Brembo brakes on it, you're gonna to have to have those 20 inch wheels because you need those big rims to get over the massive discs. And that brings me on to the next element of X100 ownership, running costs. Yes, you can get into an XK8 for three or four thousand pounds and an R for six or seven, but this was once a 60,000 pound car, remember? And don't go thinking that just because the values have come down that parts prices have as well. We'll start with brakes because after our Isle of Man trip, the front discs were knackered. They really needed replacing. But to actually put a decent set of discs and pads on this car, just for the front, was around five hundred pounds. Then we come to tyres. This is a 400 horsepower car in XKR form and that means you're probably not going to go putting some 30 quid ditch finders on it. For a decent tyre that you'd actually trust to a car this fast, you're going to be talking about a couple of hundred quid a corner. Replace two or three for your MOT 
and that starts to add up. But that said, basic service items, your oil, your filters, your spark plugs, are perfectly reasonable. You can get them at most motor factors and you can service the car at home, save yourself a bit of money and get the satisfaction from the fact that servicing a 400 horsepower V8 is no harder than doing it on a 1.6 Astra. Then there's that other running cost, fuel, which is particularly poignant with prices the way they are at the moment. On a motorway haul from Ashford up to Haysham for our Isle of Man ferry, this car on the motorway with cruise control, aircon and so on, did a genuine 30.1 miles to the gallon. Even with a 4.2 supercharged V8, the latest six-speed cars are barely idling at 70 miles an hour, so the economy is remarkably reasonable for what is a very big, heavy car. It gets better. On a drive from Newcastle back down to Yolding recently, I achieved 32.4 miles to the gallon. But don't go thinking that if you use that power, you're gonna give up your economy. Because even if you're really welly on a B-Road Blast, you're still going to be talking about 18 or 20 to the gallon. Now I know that's not reasonable day to day, but for a 400 horsepower car that's this heavy and this fast, that's not too bad. And it's worth remembering that unlike a lot of cars of this calibre, you can run an X100 on E10 fuel. You don't have to put super in it every time. Now granted, we'd still recommend putting a tank of E5 in it every now and then just to keep it happy. When you don't have to do that every single time and you're doing 30 to the gallon on a run, it all adds up. Some people say that Jaguars are unreliable. Well, I can tell you that this car is a 20-year-old example with 90,000 miles on it, and touch wood, and there's a lot of it in here, this car has been faultlessly reliable. It's never failed to start, it's never had a flat battery, it's never broken down, never left us stranded. And while it's had the old little glitch here and there, things like the radio not turning on, so you have to turn the key off and back on, and the windows dropping randomly and things like that, it's been a gloriously reliable car, this. Look after it, and it really will look after you. So to sum up, could you live with an X100 Jaguar XK? Could you daily drive it? Could it be your only car? Well, if you bear in mind that it is a strict two-seater, you are definitely not getting people in those back seats. And you've got your eyes open in terms of the running cost and the maintenance and the fact this is still a 60,000 pound car, even if you're buying it for a tenth of that then absolutely you can live with one. It's comfortable, it's practical, surprisingly economical, luxurious, reliable, stylish, and it makes you feel special. Come out to this car after a long day at the office, sit in this lovely interior, and immediately you feel good about yourself. And for the kind of money you have to pay for one, it's a bargain as well. You can get into an XK8 for three or 4,000 pounds. Get yourself one, get it on a nice road, and you really will feel like the cat that got the cream. <laughs>